So I'm just taking a quick break between lip lifts. We have several today. And uh, I just wanna talk about the best lip filler. We get a lot of questions about that. And I went over this in the lecture that, uh, or the seminar that I had done recently that's on our uh, Instagram live feed. But uh, patients always ask what the best lip filler is. So I'll just start by telling you the worst lip filler and then I'll tell you the best ones. So the worst lip fillers of all time have always been silicone. Uh, Bellafil, Artifil, Aquamed, Bioalchemid, those are like the worst. Now there are a couple doctors who use them very very well for certain specific tiny little lines or dots or things like that, um, but those are very few doctors in the entire world who are good at them. Uh, so always stay away from silicone by like for no reason should you be using silicone in the lip unless you're with that one doctor in the world who's amazing at it. Um, Past that, we have Radius. Radius is calcium hydroxyapatite, which is a calcium paste that's like a, a filler made from bony material. Uh, that should not be placed in soft tissues in general, nor should it be placed in sensitive areas that can scar. So you never place Radius in the lip, ever, ever. Uh, you don't place Sculptra in the lip, ever. Sculptra is a scarring type material that we use to build uh, granulation tissue within the face. It is not healthy for the lip. It should never be used in the lip. It's very, very bad for the lip. Then we have fat injections. Fat injections are super tricky and uh, doctors don't understand this because they don't inject fat in the lip and then go cut right above right after to see where it went. I do, uh, so I've seen it and I've also seen all the complications from it. So fat injections, they can be done in the lips, but such a small scant amount because if you try to really volumize with fat, it immediately, even if you inject it down here, it'll immediately pop through right there. And we're talking about three millimeter distance. It's not hard for it to go and it's immediate. Um, and once it grafts there, it stays and you end up with a glare across the uh, entire white vermilion, which doesn't look very, very good. So fat, you have to be very cautious with. It doesn't mean you can't use it. You just have to be very, very, very cautious and do not assume it's not gonna migrate. Even when I inject it and I'm super careful with tiny little cannulas, and I go in and do a corner lift after, I see it sitting right there and I'm like, shit, it almost uh, broke the barrier. So there's a little tiny barrier there. Now we have the hyaluronic acids. That's what everybody uses. So hyaluronic acids, classically, you would recognize as Juvederm, Restylane, uh, that family of filler. Within those fillers, the worst by far for the lip, and this is not, uh, I mean, it's debatable if you don't know much about lips or you don't have the insight yet but uh, it's generally if you show someone a thousand pictures you can't debate it so you can debate it if you don't have evidence if you have evidence i have a lot of evidence um, there's no debating it it's uh, the the worst of the hyaluronic acid which doesn't mean you can't use it it just means it's the worst is uh, juvederm three and four so juvederm three and four are extremely hydrophilic they can carry at least six times their weight in water more so than the other fillers and they're also very reactive. So Juvederm, for example, should never be used in the under eye ever. Voluma should never be used in the under eye either. For the lip, what it tends to do is even when the clinical effect goes away after about six months in the pink vermilion, it can migrate north, we call it Moviderm, and it can go about a centimeter north of the vermilion border, one centimeter, 10 millimeters. That's a lot on a 20 millimeter, 18 millimeter lip. 10 millimeters is a lot. And what it does is it inhibits your muscle function, keeps the lip from functioning properly so you start getting a floppier upper lip. Your lip starts to lengthen from both the expansion effect of the filler plus the inability for the muscle to contract properly. So it causes a lot of problems. There's a glare that also forms over there across and a bulge that makes you look kind of like a monkey. So it gives a simian appearing lip. And this happens even if you inject a tiny bit and this part goes away a year or two later it can march up there. That's why I always tell doctors, uh, yes, get excited when a new filler comes out, but no way can you really judge the long-term effect of that filler for at least two years. So you have to wait to see what it does. Uh, every doctor thinks, or not every, many doctors think that because the clinical effect is gone, the filler is gone. These fillers that are hyaluronic acid, the clinical effect, meaning what you see, might be gone in six months, but the residue of the filler can be there for at least 10 years. And residue is the same thing as filler. And it can do that in the under eye, it can do that in the lip, it can do it anywhere in the face. They actually tend to stick around much longer than you think, easily going to 10 years. And I've seen this and the patient I'm doing right now has it and had filler placed one time, had it done like six years ago, very small amount, and she doesn't have any good benefit from it at six years, she only has negative, which means it came up here and migrated 
and it gave her this little crystally kind of white look over here whereas the rest of her skin looks normal and it weighs down her corners too so it made her lip look heavier and from the side it makes it just kind of jut out a little bit which is not sexy so Juvederm 3 and 4 I use them if I have a patient with scleroderma and uh, they have an extremely dry thin villainous type lip um, and you have to keep it hydrated and they keep absorbing everything else that's the filler to use Juvederm 3 and 4 is for that it's fantastic for that Otherwise, I tend to stick to anything else. So Voluma is too thick, Restylane Lift is too thick. In the Allergan family, you have Volur, Volbella, those are fantastic in the lips. Uh, Volift is probably okay too. In the Restylane or Galderma family, you have Restylane is great for it, but it's a beaded filler, so you can get little balls sometimes, just like Juvederm. Uh, you have Restylane Silk, which is just very inflammatory, but can still be used. Uh, you have Wrestling Refine, Define, and now Wrestling Kiss. Those, those are in the same family of linear stranded products, and they tend to do very well. They still do migrate, but when we're talking about migration with these other products, we're talking about one to two millimeters, maximum three. When you're talking about it with Juvederm three and four, you're talking about one centimeter. When you're talking about silicone, you're talking about two centimeter migration. So it's much, much more substantial. Bellotero is also okay to use. Um, and then outside of the country, you have many many more options but i would always stick to those and stay away from the long acting ones like voluma and stuff like that they tend to be very hard to get rid of i'll do a separate one later for under eyes but i'll just briefly say the volor and volbella which are good for the lip never place in the under eye you should not place those in the under eye nor should you place voluma because uh, they're high cross and they are very reactive in the under eye and they're very hard to get rid of but i'll explain that later so either way stick to anything but Juvederm 3 and 4. And if your doctor says, no, I've been using Juvederm for, for years, it's not a problem, uh, maybe they're the one person in the world who's never had an issue with it, or maybe they're the 99.9% .9 who don't see the issue. And that's what we see mostly. And when I teach doctors and they come by, once they see it on one patient, that's all it takes, they see it on everybody else forever and ever, and they see the limitation in mobility on everybody and the fact that uh, it is not a natural filler for the lips. So if you wanna look fake, go for it. If you want your lip to get longer and more monkey-like, go for it. Otherwise, you have all these other options. Why not use them? You have uh, so many other options. So um, that is my experience on it. And my experience on lips tends to be fairly extensive in the world of surgery and injectables. I inject a lot of people. Well, not anymore, slowing it down. But any questions you guys have, happy to answer anytime. Um, I think there's a bunch of questions, but I got to go run and do some surgery. Okay, enjoy yourselves and I hope everybody's calm in the world today. I'll put this up so everybody has um, this for their reference.